，欢迎大家来到技嘉新时代电脑发表会。Team up, fight on, ladies and gentlemen. The press event now begins. 
and the one they really get. For example, if we want to build an all core 5G solution, you need to learn a lot. First, you need to know the multiple how hardware, for example, like the power solution, you need to know how to set in the BIOS. Uh, you need to know how to build a liquid cooling system. And you must be a lucky guy. Because you need to have a good luck to buy the CPU that is overcollectable for 5G. We know it causes the trouble for gamers. That's why we launched the motherboard with liquid cooling and uh, before we sorted CPU so that they can easily to enjoy the benefit of the high performance. Second, we try to give gamer the best hardware solution. We all know that the, the thing inside the gaming is still far behind the real world. So gamers still looking forward how they can play game without any hardware limitation. All those can be the can, can play the rule. Third, we try to create some features gamer can really enjoy while they playing games. For example, the monitor is the less interface between the system and the gamer. We let the monitor not just for display, we let the monitor have active function. We call it a static monitor. So, Monitor can be the gaming assistant, not only the display. That's all. Um, the tech line of Oros is team up by arm. He also captured the spirit of this brand. We want to team up, not only inside Oros team, but we also want to team up, such as Google the AMD Fison, and the team up with media, such as all of you, team up with our fans, team up with our customers. That's what we want to do. We want to join the ecosystem and enjoy the ecosystem. So today we prepare a very, uh, how to say, very uh, good presentation for you. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. Wow. Like you said, Eddie said, what a camera's expectation is of what we have in our core. And here it comes for a good game. No team, no game. So ladies and gentlemen, now I would like to introduce you our closest partner. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together once again and welcome Mr. Chris Kilburn! Corporate Vice President of Strategy Programs and Operations, please. Thank you. Can you all hear me? All right, great. Hey, it's wonderful being here today and having such a great partner like you invite. You know, Eddie told me um, when I got here, I had no idea. This is the first time that they've ever held an event just for AMD. And you know what? Now is the right time for that. Give it a great process that we have out there today. I'm sure all of you heard yesterday, like the whole world heard, how great our Ryzen processors are, our third generation processors are. And you know, it is going to be fantastic on July 7th when all of these processors start hitting the street. Our gaming community is going to love these these uh, boards that Gigbyte has, along with our Ryzen processors. So, I tell you what, let me do one thing. Let me invite Travis, why don't you come on up here? Travis is going to share with you some more details about our problems. Yeah, I think we have to Travis, our director of Pine Company of AMD. Thank you guys, Travis Kirsch. Uh, you know, when we started this Ryzen journey uh, a couple years ago, we knew that platform was had to be the heart of this of, of everything we do. 
you can make a great CPU, but if you don't make a great platform, something with longevity, something that, that does something that no one else can do, then, then you don't really have a great product. And so our engineers put together some amazing things for you to, to play with over the coming months. Uh, I can't wait for you guys to get your hands on this stuff. But I want to I want to really dive in a little bit more into the platform today. You guys heard a lot about the CPUs yesterday in our keynote. Um, we're super excited about that technology. But the platform, I think, is even a bigger inflection point for us than, than the CPU. And I'll explain why. First thing is I am talking about forward-looking state uh, uh, stuff, so uh, you know it, it can change. So uh, I have to do this for legal reasons. <laughs> okay. So the X570 chipset. Um, this is this this platform is incredible. Uh, the first thing you're going to notice as you as you venture out the context is the. Uh, the motherboard selection that we have for this platform is the best that AMD's ever had. And Gigabyte is, has been a big part of that. They've got the Oris Extreme that's coming out as an X570 motherboard, and also the Oris Master. Um, so we really appreciate what they've done to partner with us to bring out those platforms. The, the second thing is uh, this platform puts us in a leadership position. Um, and it's gonna, it's gonna, it's, it's an inflection point for the industry because now we take desktop processing to a new level. It's the first platform of PCI Gen 4. And then the third thing is we've added a lot of uh, connectivity to this just to make it convenient. Uh, how how often do you have a couple, more than a couple of super speed USB devices that you want to attach and, and your ports are used up? Uh, you won't have to have that problem anymore with this platform. And we talked about third gen Ryzen yesterday. Um, this is the first the first processor that's PCI Gen 4 ready. Uh, so in addition to bringing an IPC that's now uh, extremely competitive to the industry with the processor, we're bringing a platform feature that no one else can match. You know, when you think of PCI Gen 4, probably most of you, the first thing you think of is graphics, right? Um, we showed this in our keynote yesterday. I just want to remind you that when you test that graphics bandwidth on the, uh, the newest 3D Mark PCI Express feature test, we are up to 69% faster than, uh, than the, Gen, the Gen 3 uh, platform. So that's exciting. But I think, uh, I think it gets more exciting when you dive a little deeper into it. Uh, we have early results from, from the Fizon controller on the, uh, on the Aorus uh, PCI Gen 4 NVMe. And what we're seeing is up to 42% faster SSD speeds. Now, can you imagine how fast uh, Windows is going to uh, not just load, but how fast you can install Windows now? So uh, this is incredible speed. And uh, you can only do this with AMD. But it's more than just the speed. It's, it's, it's the amount of connectivity that we're going to provide with this platform. If you add up the, uh, the dedicated uh, I.O. that comes directly off the CPU, what you get from the X570 chipset. Uh, you can see that we're going to have up to 12 ports with a USB 10 gig per second uh, super speed, and up to 14 SATA ports, and up to 40 lanes of PCIe uh, linkage coming off the CPU and coming off of the uh, chipset. So that's unheard of, especially when you compare to the best that the competition can offer in the mainstream gaming space. But it's, it's more than just the I.O. Uh, connectivity. You have to be able to drive that through uh, with bandwidth back to the processor. And so we've actually created, you know, you've got, you've got the PCI Gen 4 by 16 graphics link, um, which is twice the bandwidth of our competitor. But then when you flip over the, the rest of the I.O., you've got a dedicated four lanes of PCI Gen 4 that goes to the chipset. You've got a ded dedicated four lanes of PCI Gen 4 that goes to the storage to hook up with the Aorus uh, NVMe. And then you've got a dedicated four ports of uh, USB 10 gig. Um, when you add all that stuff up, you've got over five times the I.O. bandwidth on this platform versus our competition, going back to the processor. So you're unconstrained. You can do anything uh, on, this, on this platform with that bandwidth. 
you put all that stuff together, you, you, you take the engineering work that AMD's put into it, the vision that we've had for the platform, and then the partnerships that we have with the uh, with Gigabyte and, and Fizon, and you end up with an amazing set of motherboards that are, that are going to become the market that um, I think will, will, will take us to the next level of computing. And you know, our vision is not just to win share in the desktop market, it's to grow the desktop market. Like, we deserve that, right? Um, we create something that no, no other platforms can do, and uh, it's something that a customer wants and excites the market, then we're going to create demand for this market. And uh, desktops are not dead. We believe in them. And, uh, and you know, with your support, Gigabyte support, we're going to take this to the next, to the next level. So with that, I just want to thank you guys for having me out today. Thank you, uh, KS. Thank you, Eddie. Um, and uh, thank, you, you, thank you to you guys just to, uh, for, for, for your support. And I can't wait for you guys to uh, test out and be part of the world's most advanced platform on the planet. Thank you, Jonas. Thank you so much. Wow. Excited, isn't it? It was a great model and amazing CPU. What's the next? Memory and storage. Of course, yes. You know, people are getting more and more critical about memory and the storage because the size, the files, and then the applications are all growing in size. What's going on here and what can we do and what are we going to offer you ladies and gentlemen? Put your hands together. Let's welcome Mr. KS1, the chairman of Fison, to tell you what's going on here. Woo. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I believe most of the media friends here, you may not know about Fison, but today I'm not stranger here, okay? I try to bring you something interesting to tell you what we are doing and who we are. Uh, I represent Fison Electronics. We have provided a lot of uh, uh, flash controller solutions to the market. And I'm a friend of Gigabyte, and I'm a fan of Gigabyte. Uh, thank you. I'd like to tell you, my office here, we have over 3,000 of desktop, 95% motherboard coming from Gigabyte. And, and I have a big leg, which we qualify a lot of SSD in our solution. Over 5,000 of motherboard coming from Eddie. So Eddie, I'm your big customers. Don't forget, okay? So, first of all, get some discount, please. First of all, I have to tell you who we are. Pfizer. I represent Pfizer. Uh, I'm the CEO and the chairman of Pfizer. Uh, we are developing whole kind of uh, flash control in the world. If you imagine 18 years ago, the first USB pen drive controller coming from Pfizer, but legacy, there was a history. First USB drive, today we are going to tell you in the world the first PCI NVMe Gen 4 SSD coming from here. Okay? So, what we play the role, our role in this ecosystem. We have a map here. AMD provides a good engine, good chipset, good graphic. But imagine the whole Unreal Gen 4 without the storage, without the Gen 4 storage. You can use only the Gen 2 SSD. Imagine one thing, you get a Ferrari today with a super good AMD engine ran up from 0 to 100 kilometers by 1 second. Unfortunately, the tire, the tire itself has a speed limitation. So no fun, right? So our role here, we play our role, provide the first worldwide, first Gen 4 super high-speed SSD solution to this ecosystem. So, this again, we create the other history, the first one in the world. So, how we make it, and why we make it? I've been visit to AMD office in Jose last August, after FMS. Uh, we have a meeting, just show meeting, and 60 minute meeting with the AMD's uh, gentlemen. And they try to tell us the market need something new this year with the PCI Gen 4. PCI Gen 3 SSD, the peak performance is 3.2, 3.3 gigabyte per second in both read and write. AMD engineers convince me, if we can make the new controllers, which with a 15% of performance upside, and they convince me, the gamers, they will 
exciting and crazy voyage. So since last August, I back from my US, back to my office, I try to convince my engineering team to develop the J4 controllers to match today's <coughs> announcement and the launching by coming months. Unfortunately, my engineer team, my president, my partner said, no, no interest. Okay, I spent a lot of my time, again, we spent a lot of money. Eventually, we made the products ready today. According to every team, the request was 15% of performance upside. With my hard working of my engineers, we hit today real performance over 5 gigabyte per, per second, right over 4.3 gigabyte per second. So it's not 50%, it's a 42%. So this is not the best in the PCI Gen 4, but this is the best in the world today, which wow. can make you excited. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Unfortunately, I am not a gamer. I was engineers, which you know, engineers usually no time to sleep, so no time to play game. <laughs> but but at least I provide something good for gamers, right? Yeah. yeah. So the best is not yet come. Today, these controllers with a gigabyte will provide the world first SSD J4 with a super high performance that you can enjoy. Of course, this is not the best in the world next year, but coming soon, we have the other new controller coming by Q1 next year, which can help you to hit 6.5 gigabyte per second. Okay, we have to keep investing a lot of engineering resources and again, a lot of money. So, gamers, please be crazy of today's products. You buy more, we invest more, you can get more. <laughs> <laughs> right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. very sexy for all the gamers. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. With AMD, with Fison, we're going to give you the Oros Extreme Power. And now, I know, before again, beauty is useless because the real beauty is inside there. So I'll give the room to a very handsome gentleman. He's so called of product manager. So ladies and gentlemen, Please put your hands together. Let's welcome Mr. Matthew Irwin! Woo -hoo! Yes! Woo -hoo! Hello and welcome everybody. I'm glad that uh, you're all able to come out here. I know Computex is a very busy time um, and I'm glad that you could spend some of it with us. Uh, it would be an understatement to tell you that I've been excited about this launch for a year. Um, I've been pushing this internally, I've been wanting to talk to you externally. Um, the stuff that I'm about to show you is the reason I got into this industry. And I hope that if you have that same feeling about more cores, more power, uh, more use case scenarios, right? Having systems that do what you want and not being limited by the current technology, uh, then you're in the right place today. So let's, before I get into all the stuff that we have available today, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about where we came from, and uh, mostly about AMD. So if you're like me in 2005, you were playing Counter-Strike, uh, if you were lucky enough to have an internet connection, and uh, we had two cores, right? Two gigahertz. Uh, if you had the CPU, you thought you were tough stuff. Uh, move on to the four-core Phenom. This is right around when I learned about the pencil trick, if any of you guys are familiar with that one. Um, back when overclocking was uh, a little bit of an art, a little bit of skill, and a little bit of luck, right? Um, some fun times. And so we're starting to play games like Battlefield, Bad Company 2, right? Massively multiplayer online games, and the games that we play are starting to shift, right? Everybody wants to play multiplayer. Fast forward to just recently, and we're up to eight cores, right? For so long, we were talking about two versus four, two versus four, and then eight cores come, right? And it's not that it came, uh, well, it came out of necessity. Really, right? Uh, there's a lot of gamers out there that are streaming, that are playing games and interacting with people, right? So you're not just playing your game, maybe you have OBS open in the background. Uh, maybe you have some kind of recording device, right? We're still a little rudimentary at this point, right? Uh, not a lot of people have green screens. Maybe we're streaming in like 720p, something like that. So let's talk about today, right? And 12 plus cores at 3.8 gigahertz, right? Now we're starting to stream in full HD. 
Now we have green screens behind us. We have stream decks. Uh, maybe we have six or seven applications playing in the background, right? And so what I'm saying is that we're not just creating these products um, because we can. We're creating it out of demand. The demand that we see from gamers and ways to push forward what we're doing with our systems. So this is a basic chart I made, right? Um, and as the core count goes up, what you'll notice is the power consumption goes up as well. And we don't make CPUs, we make a platform that goes in it, and this is where we come in. The more cores you have, the more performance you're pushing out of your system, the more you're gonna need out of your motherboard. So to start out, I'm gonna talk about uh, power delivery. And so most of you in the media might recognize something like this. This is our true phase VRM design. Uh, it's a PWM chip, it's a series of doublers, and we create more phases, right? We won a lot of awards for this, a lot of people praised us for going back to a real VRM. Uh, I think actually I saw Leo earlier, I think that's a direct quote from you, but if I'm wrong, I apologize. Uh, but I believe that is. Uh, and so you'd, you'd look at this and you'd say, okay, Gigabyte has an award-winning design. Uh, it was at the top of the stack last generation. So we're just gonna add to it, right? Let's add a, another blue doubler, let's add some more phases. Let's just make it more. Uh, but AMD didn't stop by just making it more. They made it better. And so that's what we did too. So ladies and gentlemen, what you're looking at here is the world's first direct 16-phase VRM. And what I mean by direct... That, that's our engineers. We've been pushing for something like this for a long time. Me included. So by direct, I mean the signal comes direct from the PWM. You don't need a doubler. We're not adding extra phases just so that we can say 16 up here on a slide. It's 16 direct signals from the PWM chip. And if you know what that means, you know how big of a deal that is. It's also 70 amp power stages, which quick math is somewhere around 1120 amps of power. Now, if you can push that through there, give me your phone number, I'd like to see it. But it's impressive nonetheless, right? And what we're trying to do is, like AMD was talking about, like Eddie was talking about, we're unlocking your systems. We don't want our system to be the focal point of uh, being able to overclock, being able to gain. We want it to enable you to do things that you didn't think were possible 24 hours ago, right? And that's why I'm here, really. Um, and so we're, we're super proud of this. Uh, it's the world's first Direct 16 phase. It's also the world's only Direct 16 phase. Um, and I'm incredibly excited to share a little bit about that with you, right? And so this sounds impressive, right? 16 phases, all these amps. What does that actually look like? So the first reason we did it is power efficiency, right? And so our VRM design compared to a normal parallel design is about 4% more efficient. Now 4% might not seem like a lot, but let's put that in another term. That's the difference between an 80 plus bronze and an 80 plus gold power supply, right? So no small feat, it's a couple, couple steps higher. So power efficiency is good, but that doesn't tell the whole story. So let's talk about thermals for a second. This is a parallel eight phase running with absolutely no heat sink on the motherboard, and we're pushing it as far as we can, but uh, it's throttling, right? 100 plus C, you're throttling. You're, you're not even pushing the system as far as you can. Let's compare that to our board with no heat sink. Let's talk about our board with no heat sink versus our board with the total or thermal solution. Now we often talk about the front of the board, why don't we talk about the back of the board? Because that's just as important, right? <laughs> wait, wait, I got one more for the big reveal. This is what I was waiting for. Let's put them side by side. From 8 phase to 16 phase, you're looking at 16 degrees Celsius just by adding our direct phase VRM. You add our total thermal solution, you get an additional 20C. Total, that's a difference of 36C just from our design. That's 25. <laughs> So as you can see, we're not thinking about one part of our board, right? We're talk talking about the front of the board, the back of the board, the efficiency, the thermals. That's why on this slide it says Oris Total Thermal Solution, because we're not just looking at one part of the board. We're looking at it as an ecosystem. So let's see what that looks like. This is an Oris Thermal Ecosystem, and I'll tell you exactly why we call it an ecosystem. Let's look under the hood. First, you have direct touch heat pipe. 
enhanced thermal pads, Figs Ray heat sink, chipset heat sink, aluminum cover, three enlarged M.2 heat sinks, and a nano carbon base plate. The reason the board that you're looking up here is the only passively cooled board that you've seen at Computex is because of this complete solution. The entire board is a heat sink. From the back to the front, from the fins to the VRM, everything is interconnected, everything helps add to the surface area, and that's the way that we're able to run the board as fast as you can possibly push it, absolutely passively. So ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to show you the X570 Oris Extreme our flagship motherboard for this launch. With layered heat sinks, interconnected dissipation, meaning that all of the heat sinks work in conjunction with each other, over 85% of the board is covered by some kind of a heat sink. The entire thing is metal, not just the heat sinks, down to the I.O. shield. It's the first time Gigabyte's ever done that. An unparalleled power delivery. So of course we're not here just to talk about one motherboard, right? Let's talk about all of them. We have the Extreme, the Master, the Ultra, Pro, and for those of you who like ITX, ITX as well. This is the entire Oris lineup that we have here for you today. Now what you'll notice throughout all of these boards is that we believe in creating a baseline of performance, right? So at the top, I already talked to you about the world's first direct phase VRM. Towards the bottom, all of them are doubled just like our previous generation. So what we did is we took something that used to be on our flagship and moved it into the mainstream. And we elevated our flagship up. Now let's talk about something you guys didn't see coming. I know you all expect us to show a Gen 4 SSD, and we'll get to that. But I'd like to introduce you to the world's fastest and largest Gen 4 SSD. And what do I mean by fastest and largest? How can I stand up here and say that? Well, just like the rest of it, let's look inside. What you're looking at is four Gen 4 SSDs in one car. Each of them running at full X4 speed. You're saturating the entire X16 lane, PCIe slot, with this car. You're looking at eight terabytes of total memory at a ridiculous speed that we'll get to in a second. The reason that I show you the inside here is that it may look like a simple PCB, but the amount of engineering that went into this is no small feat. There's a series of redrivers, there's special PCB layers that we had to use to get the timing right. This is a full-fledged 4x4 SSD. So obviously, in order to make it a total solution, we're going to have to include a very large heat sink, thin aluminum heat sink, and uh, add a cover on it with a uh, turbo blower style fan, and you have the world's fastest, largest Gen 4 SSD right here today. So what if, so who did we make this for, right? I mean, that's pretty impressive, but uh, we literally made it for the people sitting in this audience. If you're a content creator, if you work with 4K video, uh, if this can actually work into your workflow, this is for you, right? And so if it's anything like my office, this is what I see on my designer's uh, screen when I walk into work. She's not working on one file, she's working on four, or five, or six. She's passing this file to that guy, that guy to that guy, and on and on and on, right? And so this really is a workstation solution. It's for those of you content creators that understand that time is money. Right? And so, take a picture. That's 15 gigabytes per second, read and write. That's five times faster than whatever SSD you have in your system sitting at home right now. So let's talk about that in real time. If you were to open 140 gigabyte files, you're looking at, or I'm sorry, if, you're, if you open a 40 gigabyte file, you're looking at saving about 2.7 read time, right? But that, I mean, what's the difference between 12 and two seconds? What am I gonna do with 10 seconds? Over a day, if you open up 140 gigabyte files, you get an extra coffee break. I can use coffee right now, so I think an extra coffee break sounds good, right? I'm supposed to be joking. <laughs> 
What about over a week? You're going to save about 1.8 hours, enough time to go to a movie, right? We're starting to get somewhere. Over a month, that's an eight-hour workday. Maybe you take a three-day work week or a weekend, right? How about over a year? Does anybody want to take a 12-day vacation somewhere just from the time savings from your SSD? <laughs> Uh, if anybody has a good travel agent, I'm in the market for great right after yes, coffee sex, so I'll talk to you So that's pretty impressive. So what if I'm not a content creator? Me personally, I'm a gamer. I'm not a content creator. I, I, I do marketing, I play games. Uh, if I have time, as the, the Pfizer boss was talking about, uh, I'd love to say I play more games, but uh, I don't. Uh, so what if you're just a gamer? We have a solution for that as well. So the world's first PCIe Gen 4 SSD, coming in two terabyte and one terabyte. So why do we create this? Well, as you know, as I know, um, game sizes have increased over time exponentially. We're not talking about doubling every time, we're talking about quadrupling every time. I remember a time when we actually used to get games on like a CD and then we got a DVD. Uh, and now they're too big to do that, right? You just, if you get a CD or a USB drive, it's just linking you somewhere to download, right? Game sizes have gotten bigger and bigger over time. And if you're like me with my SSD at home, currently I can only have, what, three, four games installed, maybe? My Steam library is 50, right? I can't have all those games there at a reasonable price with good performance. And that's where this comes in. So what you'll see uh, highlighted uh, is the Toshiba Big Score gen <clears throat> latest generation of Flash, which allows us to go from 400 to 800 mega transfers per second. Well, what you'll see in the ultra high resolution is the Fizen E16 controller that allows us to do this. So what are we talking about in terms of speed? Well, I, I think we already kind of spoiled this one, but uh, we're looking at about 5,000 read and about 4,400 write. So yes, about a 40% increase uh, over previous generations. And again, just like our add-in card, you have to think of it as a total solution, right? We can put some chips on a PCB, we can use a controller. How are you going to ensure that you get 5,000 out of your SSD? Well, we use a full coverage copper heatsink. And what do I mean by full coverage? Dual copper heatsink, top and bottom, with the thermal pad in between, top and bottom. Full copper heatsink, right? If we're going to have a dual-sided PCB, we have to have a dual-sided thermal solution. And so uh, we have some of these in the back. Well, pick this up later. Uh, you'll see that the copper uh, for the entire heatsink is about 77 grams. So no, it, it's hefty. And so we designed this for gamers, right? Just to kind of bring it home. Um, but rather than me keep going on about SSDs, I want to show you a quick video about exactly what this looks like. you guys today? Well, Eddie kind of alluded to some tactical monitors. If you were lucky enough to be with us at CES, you saw exactly what we meant. So let's get into those. Oh, actually, let me show you the actual Gen 4 ecosystem first, right? So with our partners from AMD, we're able to have Gen 4 on X570. With our partners at Fison, we're able to have our Gen 4 M.2 SSD. With our awesome engineering team, we're also able to give you a Gen 4 added part SSD. We're the only manufacturer able to give you a complete Gen 4 
ecosystem from cover to cover with an AMD CPU. So a little bit of foreshadowing, let's talk about tactical monitors. So this is gonna be the world's first series of tactical monitors. And for those of you uh, that read the word tactical and go, what is this guy trying to spin me? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in the next slide. So what's a gaming monitor? Let's talk about that first. Gaming monitors are defined by spec, right? They're fast, uh, they have a high refresh rate, maybe 144, 240 hertz. Um, maybe something like this, 0.5 milliseconds, maybe they're 8-bit, and maybe they have AMD FreeSync. And we have all of this. We have all this and more. But that doesn't make a tactical monitor, that makes a gaming monitor. A tactical monitor enhances your ability to play a game. Right? So, like Eddie was talking about, it's the last interface between you and your game. Right? You have your keyboard and your mouse, but really, the way that you feel the game is through your monitor. And so, if we can enhance the way that you interact with your monitor, then we can enhance your ability to play that game. So what is the Aorus tactical advantage? Well, the first one you're looking at is up on the screen. You have OSD Sidekick. And for anybody that's ever used a tactical monitor, you know that there's usually a joystick on the bottom of it, and you have to fumble through a series of menus to change things like brightness, gamma, color correction, any of that kind of stuff. And lately, manufacturers have been getting better. They give you software, and you can usually change 80, 90% of the things that you can do on the physical monitor. But there's always that one setting you have to change on the monitor itself. With our OSD software over here, every setting that you can change physically on the monitor, you can change in this software as well. And you can do it in real time. But that's not really enough. If I'm sitting in my Windows desktop, I don't really want to be changing my color correction. I don't really want to be changing my brightness settings. How do I know that my wallpaper looks better a little bit brighter, right? I need to do this in-game. And so what we did is we took it one step further and created hotkeys for all of this. So you're playing a game and you hit your hotkey and you can raise the brightness. And you can look at it in real time with your eye and say, you know what, I like it this way, or you know what, it was better before. Because if you have to alt-tab out of your game, change a setting and then go back in, you're gonna second guess whether it looks better or not. With real-time activation, you can tell just in the blink of an eye that this is either the way I wanna play this game or I wanna go back to the way it was before. And it's that real-time feedback that really sets this monitor apart. We also have things like active noise cancellation, game, assi game assist, and dashboard. But these are very hard to describe to you in words, so I'd like to show you a video of somebody using it in action. This is Gideon, one of our designers. He's having a little bit of trouble communicating with the scene. You can't really see anything. Black equalizer right in the screen. Nancy, because everybody has a rubber chicken in their office, right? Uh, so all he's demonstrating here is that you're playing games with background noise, right? Not all of us are lucky enough to have a dedicated room to play a game. Cancellation, you don't have to worry about the world that's going on around you. You can just talk to the person on the other end of the line. Go, 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 go. Come on. And this one I like. Uh, so you can put a reticule on your screen regardless of the gun. So if you've ever played Apex Legends, you know that some of the reticules aren't that great. It takes no scope in somebody, just a slight bit easier. If you want to draw a smiley face, you can. For those of you guys who like to camp in bushes, you can put uh, different lines on, on the uh, reticule so you can snipe from a lot large distance, right? And so these are just some of the features that we built into our monitor that we think really give it that tactical advantage, right? Something that your competitor might not have on you. Now the cool thing about all of this is that it's not software per se, it's actually firmware built into the monitor, which means unlike a lot of monitors, we can update our monitor. 
Just like you get a firmware update on your phone, we can give our monitors a firmware update. So let me give you an example of that. Oh, actually, let me talk about TAC curves monitors. So this is the world's first curved tactical monitor. This is going to be 165 hertz, 1 millisecond, 1500R, with all of the software and features that we just talked about. So the first question you might ask is, why curved? Just to give you a little background on why we develop curved monitors, the human eye can see about 1000R, right? That's the radius. Flat monitor um, is much less. So this is the reason that we usually work in cubicles. Um, at least my office has cubicles. You can see out your peripherals and see what's going on behind you. Now, in an office setting, that's OK. In a gaming setting, that's distracting. So recently, there's been 1800R curved, right? And so that increases the field of vision a little bit. We're introducing the first native 1500R tactical monitor. And the reason it's native is that that's the way the panel comes from the factory. It's not an 1800R that we bend. That's exactly how it comes, right? And so the fact that we don't have to bend it and get that extra curvature means that you don't have to worry about excess um, backlighting or light bleed. So when I was talking about firmware, Black Equalizer 2.0 is what I was referring to. Now, most of you guys are familiar with black equalization. It takes an image, right, a super dark image like this, and it lightens it up. It does it indiscriminately, meaning it just applies it to the entire screen. So if you raise it too high, anything like at the top there where you do have light is going to look like a sunbeam coming down, right? It's just not going to look right. So sure, you can see in the little uh, cracks, but it isn't a good user experience. So we thought about this, and rather than treating the image as one image, we kind of treated it like a graphics card would. And what we do is we take over a thousand grid lines, or a thousand grids, and divide it up and determine is this box, or for lack of a bit, is this box dark or not? Does it need to be lightened? And once we determine if that box needs to be lightened, we apply black equalization to it, and you get a much brighter screen without having all of those glow points. So for those of you who might have missed it, let's look at them side by side. On the right is the normal screen, and on the left is with black equalization. And what you'll see is all the detail that that game developer spent months and years putting into the game without feeling um, like you distorted the image, right? It's a clear image. Um, and that's what we mean by a tactical advantage, right? You can see them, they can't see you, who's going to win at the end of the day. So who, what kind of use case is there for this, right? If you have a curved monitor, we're talking about immersion, right? Being into your game. So if you play games like Monster Hunter World um, and you have like FreeSync 2 with HDR, you know how vivid that color is and how much you just want to be in that game as opposed to uh, a Twitch style game, right? There's other games like Flight Simulators, right? Where you want to have that cockpit feel. League of Legends is a game that I play, right? I'm going to use all of those features to have countdowns and timers to know when I can cast a spell and you can't. And then, of course, something like Project Cars 2, right? You're playing a racing game. So this curved tactical monitor, the CV27Q, stands for 27-inch QHD, is the world's first curved tactical monitor. But what if I don't play these games? What if I play first-person shooters? What if I like Twitch kind of reactions? What if I want to play something different, like a first-person shooter? We also have the world's first FPS tactical monitor. And the reason I'm calling this an FPS tactical monitor is we designed it for FPS gamers, right? And so what is a first-person sh If you play first-person shooters, what are the things you look for? It should be pretty simple. How about a fast liquid crystal display? How about 24 and a half inches, which is the number one eSports size globally? What about a 0.5 millisecond response time? Half a millisecond may not seem like a lot, but it adds up, right? A half a second on your screen, a couple, nan or a couple milliseconds for me to, to process it, a couple milliseconds for me to react. It's a chain effect, right? 240 hertz refresh rate, um, and of course, AMD FreeSync support, right? And so the takeaway here is that we're designing products for the use case, right? We're not designing a product and then telling you, um, figure it out. We're going the other way. We're trying to figure out how you're using our products and giving you exactly what you want in that product without all the rest, right? 
So we have a curved monitor if you're going to play like MOBA games or immersive games. We have an FPS monitor if you're looking for twitch and super fast reaction times, right? And so if you play games like CSGO, you know the 0.5 milliseconds is a big deal. If you play games like Division 2, Battlefield, Bad, uh, Battlefield 5, and Apex, you know that this is the monitor that we designed for you. And so last one. Once again, guys, I want to thank you all for coming out here. I know we went through a lot of slides, a lot of products. Um, you know, I just want to kind of wrap it up by uh, reha you know, recapping what we kind of went through. Um, thanks to our partners at AMD. We have a full X570 lineup for you guys here today. Thanks to our partners at Bison. We have a full Gen 4 ecosystem for you today. Thanks to our engineers and the gamers that we hire at our HQ. We have a full set of Forest Tactical Monitors for you. I hope you guys have a great rest of your comp